Salutations, ancient sea serpents. Dive on into the stinky dragon. Partake in our latest potation, poetry in ocean. It's a mixture of constricting coffee, a cone of cold vanilla mint ice cream, garnished with pepperminster leaves. One mouthful of this monstrous mug, and your next breath will have no rhyme or freezing. Previously, our adventurers rectified a riotous rally and reconnected with old friends. After some resourceful reconnaissance, they finally found their way into the vast vamp spire. Bring over a brew and buckle up for this bedtime tale. I was, I was looking at Chris the entire time. Chris would drink that drink. It sounds like coffee and ice cream. Yeah. I think he had a little bit of drool come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he had that. <laughs> yeah. I think I saw him with it a little earlier. Is that the, the Damaris? What was it called? Yeah. The, the yum. Coffee drink you got one time? Oh, my God. Oh, that right. Monster. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I had like a week's worth of your daily, your sugar intake. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you get it all out of the way at once. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Hello, everyone. I'm Gustavo Sorolla, the dungeon master of our putrid party. I'm going to hit our four players with an arrow. Pew, 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 pew. This week's role play and warm up question is if your character could go back in time and change one thing about the past, what would it be? I was going first. Go to that chair concert, that's for sure. <laughs> is that Blaine, what, what you're I think you've just offered to get started off. I was going to go last for dramatic effect. I'll hey go. there. I'll it's go. no, 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 I'll no, go. no, no, Mateen. I insist. It's me, Chip Haney. Please <laughs> let me step into the conversation <laughs> booth or the confessional booth. Hey, it's Blaine Gibson. I play, oh God, Chip Haney. He's a, a level. <laughs> really got to get to the front of the line. Chip Haney, <sighs> Tiefling Rogue, level seven. Thank you. Thank you, Delga. Um, Previous or, or uh, now widowed. Oh, right, well, right, that's right. That's funny you should say that because if I could go back and change something about the past, <laughs> oh, I don't know, probably uh, stop my wife from dying, you know, that'd be great. Just, you know, this has been my, it's been my mission. Was that a big deal for you? It, it mm. affected me, you know, you know, random uh, conversation interviewer. It actually <laughs> hurt my feelings quite a bit. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. It hasn't been the same. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm John Reisinger. I play Meti Confisus, who is an Eric Cochran ghost monk. That's a very good question because I, you know, I've lived a very long life and I've I've experienced so many things, and and I I don't I would normally live in a, in a in a state of regret at all. If I could go back, I would have probably I don't know packed a few more croissants before we left on this adventure. I just mm. feel like I did not put enough bread in my pouch before we left. Well, it was very unexpected for yeah, you. It just yeah. wasn't, I didn't I didn't think that I was going to go to this festival and then be uh, accused of murder. You know, you <laughs> never know. And so maybe that's you just a lesson. You always have to be prepared. If you you always always pack bread. You never been to a good festival then. <laughs> Keep a croissant in your pocket. Yeah. For a festival. Yeah. Croissant in the pocket for a festival. Everyone listening, take note. <laughs> I've actually put croissants in my pockets before. Not a good idea. They get too—they're too greasy well, and buttery. They're yeah. also—they're—they're they're, they're supposed to be fluffy and like. I know. Yeah. And flaky. You, you can so flaky. You can try and put them in a wrap them in like a paper towel. Mm. No, nah, doesn't work. Anyway, who are you? Cros uh, uh, croissant uh, uh, lover. <laughs> He's croissant de mara. Hey. <laughs> and I play Barney Varney, and uh, a level seven. Uh, oh, level seven cleric. cleric. But uh, if I could. Well, this is an easy one. Oh, okay. I would have done something when my family was taken from me. Was that a big deal for you too? <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> Gus! Gus! Uh, tell, tell us how that makes you feel. He's over there just snickering. I, I, have, a, I have a, a second answer. Okay. I recently acquired a spell that uh, allows you to bring someone who has died in the last minute back to life. Oh. I wish I had prepared it this feels the like other day. You shouldn't bring it up. Oh. I wish I had known. Did you have it when Carol died? I didn't have it prepared. Oh, oh prepared. Uh, I, I, uh, and that's my second. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think for for plot reasons, that probably would have worked out. But also, wasn't that the one that came with at like a cost? There was like a cost. Or is that? Or am I thinking of that necklace that we came across? That's the necklace. That's the necklace. Oh well, Barney, you really, <laughs> you really dropped the ball there, pal. <laughs> I didn't. I know. Yeah. I didn't know. Elga, we. I need to go have a talk with Barney. Why don't you get in there? Get okay. in the booth. Barney, 
is it? You've been in there for 34 minutes. <laughs> Can I go in now? In the show, you just hear like footsteps <laughs> walking away and just like muffled arguing in the back <laughs> or just the sound of like uh, flesh <laughs> hitting flesh. <laughs> Barney really needs some more fiber. Get the get, get out of there a lot more quickly. <laughs> Marnie, you've been in the bathroom for an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm Barbara Dunkelman. Hello, everyone. And Blurble Gerbil, my friends. Uh, I play Elga Von Brath, the, the, leader. The, the leader of the party, of course. Thank you, John. Mm, Thanks mm. for confirming. Uh, the half-elf vampire barbarian, level 7. And, uh, you know, Elga <clears throat> doesn't regret a whole lot in life. But I'd say one of her biggest regrets is that one time Elga was partaking in a, a light breakfast of blood. And... <laughs> She accidentally spilled a little bit onto her favorite white frilly shirt, Ooh. and unfortunately, it didn't come out blood stains pretty bad. I'm surprised that when we went around the shops in Vania, there wasn't just one shop devoted to stain removal potions and oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Take note. Yeah. That'd be good. I think you can use like prestidigitation yeah. to help uh, get some of that stuff out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, now Elga has to wear a different mm. off-white frilly shirt. I think what you can do is if you spill blood on a white shirt like that, you can just cover it with red wine. And uh, you won't notice the blood at all anymore. They yeah. don't dry the same way. <laughs> oh, they don't. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hey, Mentos. Give it a shot at home. <laughs> please, please don't. Please, please don't. don't. <laughs> Actually, I was wrong. I needed a diamond in order to cast that spell, and I don't have a diamond, so I couldn't have done it even if I had it prepared. Oh, I have so many diamonds. I, have, I keep. I bring all my diamonds with me everywhere I, I, I go. Lots of diamonds. <laughs> you you could have just Wait, really. You have no, diamonds? No. <laughs> you know who might have had the diamonds? Carol's ring. On her finger, her wedding yeah. ring from oh, her did she marriage. Have a- yeah. <laughs> yeah. The body <laughs> disappeared, though. Yeah, that's true. To her ring, too? I don't know. Was this like a Star Wars situation? Everything disappears except the ring. Like the ring. Well, you, ding, 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 ding. you had said that you went through and gathered her belongings. So oh, if there true. was a ring that you all had, that you had given or that you all shared, that you would have had a chance to recover that. Mm. Maybe give that to me. <laughs> yes, please. Give it to the old man. <laughs> no, no. I'm say, I, like, I, it was like one of those things. You have to prepare a spell. Uh-huh. Like in, like material, a, material components. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then do it during a short rest. So you have to, you don't know what spell you're going to use at any given time. And you only get so many. So you have to like, oh, I think, I didn't think during the, uh, between the tales, there would be a main character death. We can, we can keep going. <laughs> as you move through the open archway, you pass by two red robed bat folk you recall as the Sferatu. They pay you no mind as they chant in unison and conjure clearly powerful magics. Beyond them, ornate sconces of torchlight flicker across glossy black stone walls leading further into the belly of the tower. Aromas of rotten carrion, sour sweat, and the choking of smoke waft through the passage. The reverberating din of shifting feet, fluttering of wings, and the ringing of small chimes grows in your ears, until finally you reach a crimson door with one word carved into the wooden grain, Tales of Dock. Delga, a small voice suddenly whispers in your mind. Welcome home. Easter. So uh, the door before you um, says Tales of Doc. What do y'all want to do? C- could I look at the door and see if I know what that means? Mm. Make me a, I'll, I'll say make me a wisdom check with advantage. Since it is my home. Ooh, 19. You know that it means Tale of the Tower. T-A-I-L or? Yeah, T-A-I-L. Oh. So this is the, the back entrance to the, the tower. Butt. Maybe. Probably, or if it's the bottom. Yeah, the so, butt. Question. You, you know that, um, Elga, you have never spent much time in the Tales of Doc. Oh. So this isn't home? This I mean, I, home. I, I probably spent more time up. Correct. The vamp spire, it's a... It's tall and skinny, right? Right. It's a tower or a spire, so there are... Th- presumably, there would be multiple levels. So where, where we are, this is the only door. This is the only door that, we're, that we can see. Correct. We're, like, in a hallway or an entryway... Yeah, the entryway. You just cross the bridge, past the straw two, past the gargoyles. Just stand in there. I mean, right. Is this like a situation, Elgo, where like the higher you live on the tower, like the higher on the like you know the hierarchy you are? Like, is this like a physical manifestation of like you know, I don't know, society here in Slovenia? I definitely know the answer to this question. Well. You, uh, you don't, you've never spent much time here. So I've never that, spent yeah, much that, time that, here. That, that should in be the tail. A, correct. That should be a, a very big hint as to the structure. Well, let's go in. I, I'm tired. I want to take a rest. Yeah, you want to open it up, uh, Matit? A knock on the door. You die. <laughs> <laughs> you give a quick rap on the door, and there's no response. Go ahead. What are the lyrics of your rap? Oh, I get it. <laughs> uh, could, 
Could we just open the door? I'll, I'll open the door. Do it! Okay. Uh, uh, my dude, just in case, I open the door. I, I, I acquiesce. It's live. It's live. It's live. <laughs> uh, uh, Elga, you push forward and open the door. Everyone roll me a perception check. Everyone roll initiative. I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Some sort of saving throw. 22! Mm. Half! 14. 14. Jinx. Uh, we'll start with Chip. The door opens and it's just the clamor and chaos of fervent foot traffic and chaotic crowds so overwhelming to you. It's hard to absorb what it is that you see before you. Barney and Elga, it seems to be a dingy, congested network of passages thronged with hurried folk of every shape and size going this way and that. Matid, you have maybe a slightly better vantage here. You're able to see that just up ahead, you know, there's some stairs going up and beyond that there's a T intersection and you notice Red drops on the ground near the eastern wall and blue drops on the floor near the western wall. Oh, like the colors of, of blood when it's oxygenated or not. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know more about blood than I do. <laughs> oh, I've dealt with a lot of blood. I just don't I just don't consume it, but I really do uh, produce a lot of it in different ways. Gotcha. Interesting. <laughs> Is there a little bit of an overshare there? <laughs> Is there anybody Hum- humble brag. to like greet us or anything like that or any signage? Currently no. Nobody seems to even really be giving you any mind. Everyone's uh, bustling about on their way. I'll tell you what, everyone roll make, make me um, a wisdom check. Wisdom. Ah, ah, ah. That's a nine. Seven. Fifteen. Five. <laughs> five, five, five. Five, 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 five. So, Barney, with all the chaos going on around here, I think in general here in Vania, Barney's been on edge a little bit. Yeah. What? You don't say. <laughs> Not notice that at all. No way. Seems cool as a cucumber. I think, Barney, you have an inkling that with all the chaos you see before you, it might make sense to make note of the path you're taking. You think that you that you might be in for a, a maze of corridors ahead of you. Ah. And, Matid, what, what, again, like you saw the which blood on which side and which blood on the other side? It was uh, red blood on the east side, blue blue droplets. The droplets, droplets on the left side. On the west. Western, yeah. Okay. Wait a second. I've noticed something that we do I've, as I've re-listened to it is that we add words into what he says. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times it sends us down the wrong direction. Yep. <laughs> we are very bad at parroting. I uh, think I saw that Gus. entire table of Micah, Gus, Ben, <laughs> David all I, just go like, it's, yep. wh- it's why I try to put a lot of intent in trying to use your words yes. that you say because I know I'm prone to that. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in that vein, uh, <laughs> hey, Barney, that you, me telling you all that information mm-hmm. about the chaos mm-hmm. is the way for the DM to tell a party, make a map, because I don't want to have to constantly re-explain where it is that you're going and uh, where it is that you've been. Okay. Well, you guys saw how good my last map was. We are, uh, yeah. we are, we are, we've entered the building from what direction? Just give me You the- are <laughs> facing south. You've entered from, the north is to your back, the south is in front of you. Okay. And, and does this seem like it's primarily going upwards or are there hallways like, like is a stairway with a T-spot at the correct. end? Correct. You're like going down here, it, you know, you're in a long corridor currently. That's probably about 30, 35 feet long. Okay. Is it good that I have this long, tall paper with me yeah, today? Um, <laughs> turn it sideways. There you go. Ah. Okay. Uh, and uh, you're at the north, and uh, the, the the hallway heads south uh, from you. Yeah. Could I try to stop any of these passerbys to ask for directions? Sure. You hear the sound of a bell and turn around and see someone shuffling around. It seems like the bell sound is coming from them. Uh, what? what do you say to them? What, where's, where's the bell coming from? I don't know. It's somewhere on their body. Maybe it's tied to them? Is that all? You said there was, like, ringing. Like, or is it, like... There, the bell tower. <laughs> well, no, he said like faint sounds of ringing constantly happening. Is it, is it rhythmic? And, and, and you said there was ringing at the bottom of the well as well, but I think you said it was more like a tonal. Correct. That was, that was a that was a different. Yeah, that one. I think you said was like screeching, right? Oh no, I thought that one was like a e like a tinnitus. I think you yeah, said tinnitus. Yeah, there's a lot of tinnitus. Uh, okay, yeah, I grabbed this person. Uh, bonjour, my name is Matit. I'm here uh, visiting uh, this v- wonderful. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to describe this place. Wonderful, Wonderful uh, spire. Happy. And uh, I'm trying to get to, uh, you know, uh, to the top. Is there like a, a system here? Like I've seen, I see you got some coloring systems. You're, you're wearing a bell. Is there like a normalcy here that I can understand? Oh, hello there. Uh, the name's Vin Vaughn, the world's greatest thief. Pleased to meet you. What's your name again? Don't shake their My hands. My name is you steal something from me and you know, who knows what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Find out. <laughs> oh no, do you have anything worth stealing? Nope. <laughs> I am on guard, so if you try anything, I'm doing a check. Don't forget at this point, you all also have your cloaks on. You're trying to yeah. uh, to blend in. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I'm just, I'm a, I'm, I'm from uh, another place where vampires are from. And, 
<laughs> oh, oh, where is that? I'm only familiar with the vampire here. Uh, that is from, oh, uh, what was it? It's called, um... Scansylvania! Yes. Scamsylvania? Yeah. Sounds wonderful. Yes. Uh, must be related to Vania. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, a count like yourself should be right at home on the upper levels. Yes. Um, I'm so, is, is there uh, a way to, um, I see you got these stairways ahead of us. Uh, sh which way should we go? You sing to get up to the top. The ringing becomes louder and more insistent. What? And uh, Vin Vaughn says, yeah, of course, just uh, head up the stairway. We'll go up. Uh, anyway, I got to go. I'm uh, really in a big hurry. Someone's calling me. Bye. And uh, Vin Vaughn okay. runs off. I'm thinking that we are, what we are experiencing is that these are familiars and that they, uh, they have uh, some sort of um, communication system oh. involved with, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, aristocrats would use bells to make the, 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 the servants come up and that kind of thing. Elga, I want you to make me a history check. Okay, I was going to ask if I recognized anybody, yeah. but you might be doing that right now. Eee. Oh, with advantage. I'm sorry, I didn't say with advantage. Yay! Thank goodness, 15. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know that these are battlers. Battlers oh. that are running around. And um, even though you've never been on this level of the vamp spire, you do know that you had a lot of interactions with a battler that specifically served your family. Mm -hmm. Do I see them down here? You do not currently. The battler you remember, his name is Quiffly Ari. <laughs> I Did see. I have a nickname for him? <laughs> Quiffly. 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 Quiffly down under. Quiffly Ari? Yeah. He was a very young uh, male dwarf battler with uh, like a uneven color ginger hair. Uh, you you remember Quiffly? What was that the thing y'all got up to that one time? That 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 thing that y'all had that was lots of fun. Yeah, yeah, we were playing hide and seek, and we were just on the ceiling giggling at him, but he had no idea we were up there, which is really wild that he wouldn't just look up there because he knows that we're vampires. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's a classic Quiffly. I like to think that he was maybe pandering a little bit. That's what to I was us. gonna ask. You think that he was playing along? Yeah. Can I cast Visage of the Astral Self? It lasts for 10 minutes and it gives me advantage on insight intimidation check. I feel like that might be handy. Sure. It also gives me the, the sight in magical or, no, or non-magical darkness. Correct. I had a theory that I want to throw by you guys. I have a theory as well. I was imagining that Zvania, Vania is like uh, a, the, a, the human anatomy, like a body. Like maybe this is like the heart and like the the... Because you, you said, like, the red and the blue in, like, the blood flow. Like, maybe this is, like, there's, like, aortas and valves and well, the, the, well, that's the, a good idea. The vineyards had, like, the uh, barrels of, what, what did you call them, like, veins pumping? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's something to that. You know what, Blaine? You get an inspiration dice. Thank you. <laughs> Marking it. You think maybe, Elga, since you've never been on this, uh, on the Tales of Doc before, that... Maybe if you can find Quiffly down here, that he can point you all in the right direction and help you out, since you know he will remember you. Maybe if we all scream, scream, scream for Quiffly. <laughs> you scream, I scream. We all scream for Quiffly. What are we screaming I'm for? I'm leaving the recording. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like your theory, Blaineson, and the direction of heading to the heart is blue. So okay. So let's go well, east. I was just thinking of maybe doing our secret catchphrase. Whenever me and Quiffly would get lost from each other, we would just, one of us would do the sound and then the other one would echo the sound. Whoa, uh, what's the sound you, sound like? It's like something you scream? <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting Marco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we're, Elga we're... listens. Okay, oh, I don't hear anything. No, no, no sound, no sound. No sound, no sound. Okay, well, we, you know what? We should try that. Uh, we should we should be trying that every once in a while. That's okay. good ringtone. Mm -hmm. So the... Uh, <laughs> I, just because of what you said there uh, a little while, just a second ago, John, you know, you all are in like this main entrance to the first level of the, of the Tales of the Dock. And on the western wall from here is a framed painting of a vacant chair. And on the eastern wall is a floor to ceiling gold frame crack mirror. And then this passage continues to the south to the ascending stairs to that T intersection. Hey, Elga, whenever you look in the mirror, are you visible? Let's find out. Which side was the empty chair picture? On the west on side. The west. So then the the floor to ceiling gold frame cracked mirrors on the eastern wall. So you step in front of the mirror, uh, Elga? Yeah. Yeah, you see yourself in it. Mm, okay. There's me looking fine as can be. I was going to say, we don't want to out ourselves by walking in front of any mirrors because if they can see us, then, we, you know, we're non vampires and they so might. There's a, a mirror and then what's the other one? You said a painting with a chair. Yeah, empty chair. Empty chair. Correct. If, you, if you're going to be a stickler about words like John said earlier, I said vacant chair. Vacant chair. So like someone should be sitting there, but they are not. So so like, are, is the mirror or could be sitting in there? Is right. the mirror opposite the chair? So like theoretically, if you stood in front of the mirror, you could be looking at the chair. 
also behind you, you know, like the reflection of the chair. So the, I mean, they're kind of close to each other. The difference is that the chair is just like a framed painting, whereas the, the mirror is wall to ceiling or floor mm. to ceiling is what I said. What uh, if I look at the reflection of the chair painting in the mirror? Mm. Make a perception check. So you're trying to look into the mirror and examine the chair painting, right? Get ready for this five. Yeah. Uh, that is a, oh, 15 <laughs> plus 10. <laughs> Plus 10? Because I've been rolling fives all morning. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It was a 15. You know, you're examining the 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 painting of the chair. Yeah. And it looks like a normal painting, nothing out of the ordinary. However, as you're staring at the, the painting of the chair, you know, you're looking at the wall around it. You see that there are, in the reflection, you see that there are grooves along the floor of that western wall. Oh, be- groovy. Below the chair, the painting of the chair. Oh, as in like, uh, yeah, I urge you, you don't yeah, have to keep yeah, it in yeah, my no, 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 <laughs> groovy. No, I, I, you know, I don't have to acknowledge every single thing you say. Groovy. It would be a lot if I had to. <laughs> <laughs> um, Endless. Uh, that seems like that may be uh, maybe scrapings of where like a secret wall might be coming out. Oh, mm-hmm. la la. Uh, hmm. That's I don't. You don't need to make fun of the way I speak. No, I am, <laughs> I'm code switching. I feel like we're actually making grounds towards a friendship here, and I'd like to do that as, as a mutual endeavor. Of course, when, when I, I'm just trying to like make you feel at home by saying your <laughs> phrases and words. We're both we're both at one HP, and we both could just, <laughs> could just end each other at any second right now. Hello, Matthias. What did you see? Actually, uh, the the oh, Jaden Chip, what did you see? I, there's grooves on. So that's the secret, uh, secret entrance. Secret entrance. If the, if we move that, there's like grooves so, so that you can move the painting. Could we uh, do a little uh, like group investigation of that area to like see if we find a switch or maybe like the painting needs to be shifted or open? Stoker. Could I look at the painting? <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, you look oh, at oh. it <laughs> up close, or do you look at it through the reflection? Uh, I want to look it up close. Make an investigation check. I'm going to do it, too. With advantage? Yes, you can. Should I partake? Yeah, yeah. do it. That is a 12. Seven. <laughs> Ten. While they do that, can I look through the mirror at them looking at it? Yeah, you're watching them through yeah, the mirror? Yeah. Okay, okay, sure. We'll deal with you in a second, Barney. We'll deal with you in a second. <laughs> Just you wait. So yeah, Elga, you're able to, you know, you follow the grooves with your fingers and you're able to find like a catch, like a hidden catch that potentially could open up like a spring door. Mm. Okay. But I don't see anyone on the chair, do I? No. Okay. Barney, make me um, an investigation check as well. I assume investigation, like you're watching them, you said, right? Investi- yeah, not perception. Yeah, we'll do investigation. I love a good haunted house. 16. Yeah, nothing seems out of the ordinary. You guys, you know, you also spot those grooves and the mechanism that Elga finds. Groovy. Uh, Groovy. At the same time. Ah, good. <laughs> but it's Groovy. Matit passes through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You can do that, right? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not oh, going okay. to burn right now. You found a switch, a latch. I found, yeah, uh, essentially like a way to open it up. Right? Do it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, right, everyone, come over here. I think we should probably open this up. Should we, like, stand against it if it, like, does, like, a rotate thing? No. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll go. We'll just try to crack it open. Yeah. You activate it and open it up, and the wall, you know, slides to the side, revealing a cramped hidey hole. Oh. oh. What's inside? It's uh, filled with rancid meat, some vials of water, painter supplies, water. a red towel, uh, a key, and a cock. Oh, I should probably take that key. Some, this is like someone's quarters. Yeah. This is like someone's quarters, I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say. <laughs> uh, so, so, so wait. Rancid meat. A red key. Towel. A, a cot. Red towel. Red towel. Vials of water. Vials of water. What was the last thing? I don't know, John. <laughs> You were doing so well. I, was, I know. I was, you got all of them. You were doing so well. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I was giving it. It was, it was, it was like. Paper? Oh, yeah, painting no, no, stuff. There you go. <laughs> Painter supplies. Painter supplies. <laughs> so maybe they did the, maybe the, the chair. Maybe the person, yeah, who, yeah, lived in here painted this painting. Is this where Quiffly mm-hmm. stayed? I hope not. <laughs> that would be kind of unfortunate. Can we tell? <sighs> uh, oh. Could a... Uh, <sighs> We look up. I think Gus, the cot. Is, Gus is done with us officially. He's so done with us. <laughs> you, you look at the cot, and there's someone snoring, sleeping on it beneath a blanket. Oh. Who is it? Barney, go wake does, him up does, in your special way. Does Elga recognize this? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never not find that funny. Terrifying. Does Elga recognize the person sleeping? No, this is some bald human you've never seen before. He appears to have an unkempt, multicolored beard and paint stains on his tunic. John's mm. raising his hand. Can I get Gigi to lick him? Oh, oh sure. Brilliant. 
Well played, Matit. That's oh, that's you a deploy great move. the Gigi. The Gigi. Yeah, Gigi. Where do you want Gigi to lick him, or how do you want to approach this? I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to like. Yeah, fill just it like get Gigi in my hands and just kind of point him at the the bald head. Okay. Yeah, uh, Gigi. Um, you know, lets out a little lick on the the bald head. The the human, you know, kind of shuffles around, and you see a vision of his dream appear, start appearing before him or above him, I should say. Bus is das. You see visions. It's almost like first person point of view, like you're seeing through someone's eyes, going down a maze. Seems like they're searching for someone and they're they have painting supplies in their hands. Oh, this is a rerun. Change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we, they got painting supplies in their hands. They're trying to look for somebody in, in, in a maze and it seems like maybe they're lost. They, they, they're not. This seems like they're, he's not making progress. Oh, okay. Been there. Bonjour. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who are you? <laughs> Oh, uh, my name is Matit. Uh, Count Matit. Get my thank you very much. Mm. Sometimes I forget those little eccentricities that right. we should use. Right. Can you close the door? Okay. Sure. Elga, Elga closes the door. Oh, thank you. What are you so afraid of? I'm afraid of getting caught, and you all seem to have caught me. Oh, oh. Uh, we mean no harm. Yes, we did. Oh. Okay. <laughs> You're very naughty. You caught me in my cot. Snapping yeah. off when on duty. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Graf, my liege. Graf. Graf, what you doing is this a hole? I'm painting. See? He points to the painting supplies and the paint stains on his tunic. Are you not supposed to be in here? Or in this, or in the vampire? You see, I want nothing more in life than to paint a portrait of Count Dracula, but I can't find him. I keep getting lost. Uh... Are you all vampires? Could I maybe paint you? Oui. All of us are vampires, that's right. Yes. We're yeah. from Scamsylvania. Scamsylvania? That's the one. Sounds wonderful. It's beautiful during the fall. Yeah, and they're visiting me. I'm Elga, I live here in the Vampspire. Oh, wonderful. Do you know how I can find Count Dracula? Uh, yes. <laughs> I do. But I, it's hard to describe, so we are actually on, on our way to go find him as well, so... If you can help us, then we can help you. I keep getting lost. That's why I was hoping you could help me. Yeah. Well, you know, this place is pretty complicated. I get turned around all the yeah. time. Have you ever tried using your painting supplies to, like, mark places you've gone so that you can kind of retrace your steps? Well, oh. I'm afraid of leaving evidence of my presence here. Oh. Why do you do not want his presence to be known? I'm not supposed to be here. You're not supposed to be oh, here. Where but are you're, you supposed but to be? You're, you're trying to find Dracula himself, even though you're not supposed to be here. Don't you think you'd get in trouble? I will gift him with such a wonderful painting that he'll forgive me because I paid tribute to the almighty Count Dracula. Can I look at his paint? Yeah, sure. What color paints he have? He's got like a full palette of uh, all different kinds of paints. Uh, mm -hmm. Graf, that's your name, right? Graf. Graf, did you perhaps leave maybe a little trail of maybe some red paint or some blue paint uh, previously on the floor? I hope not. I've been trying very carefully to not leave any evidence of my presence. When, um, Gustavo, when you described the droplets, what's the, like, the pattern of it? Cause, or the cause, consistency? Is it, is it, does it look intentional or accidental? Yeah. Because that's very different. Yeah, it, it, it would seem accidental. And, oh, okay. And how oh. far apart were the droplets? Were they like close to each other? Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close in proximity. Okay. Okay. So they're I, either okay. walking okay. slowly or bleeding. So, fast. Graf, did you paint the, the empty chair and that's supposed to be where the painting of Dracula sits? Yes. Do you like my work? Oh, uh, it's magnificent the gold um uh, it's the detail the detail the brush strokes good good work you. Yeah, the, the the impasto say that anyway are, have, you, <laughs> have you made any progress on finding dracula like is there any directions that were completely dead ends i just keep getting lost it seems like no matter where i go i keep ending up back here all I really know is that the commissary is to the southeast. Commissary. It seems southeast. like I end up there all the time. Is that why you keep ending up with there's all this uh, rotten meat? Yeah. Rancid. I probably need to go get some Yeah. More. I feel like I might have put my foot in my mouth with another dumb fact. Like, I know that in the diagrams it's red and blue blood, but it doesn't actually look blue, does no. it? No. Yeah, I, it I does think it. that's like a... Now I'm remembering, like, I learned later. It's like, that's just the diagram way Correct. it does it. Mm. I'm saying that so the comments don't make you feel <laughs> stupid. Even though they probably already commented probably on already it. Have. It's okay. <laughs> hey, comments, go, I am stupid. Go back and delete your comments No, now. I'm stupid. It's okay. Why don't you all pose for me and I can make a painting of you? 
I can just do a quick sketch for now, and I'll remember you and make a more worthy painting. Can you do it fast? Well, I'll just do the quick sketch oh, okay, for now, okay. and then I'll paint it later. Okay, team, ready to pose. Yeah, I pose. Is there any spe special pose any of y'all want to do? Elga uh, wants to jump into the air and, like, spread her arms it's aside. A, it's, it's a sketch. Yeah. I, I know. I can't get that fast. But, but she, does, she wants that to be how she sketched, so she keeps jumping and posing. Okay, okay. So yes. that he could, ca yeah. Barney wants to hide his face, like... I guess like he, with he, his cloak? Sc cow, scowl. What do you call those things? A cowl? We, yeah, cowl over his face. Like so a he, classic vampire pose where yeah. you're like lifting the cape and you, your elbow is pointing out in front of your face. Yeah, he also just doesn't want to be like, yeah, he wants to be stay hidden. Everyone make a perception check. 17. 7. 14. 6. Matid, you hear footsteps walking uh, down the corridor outside in the hall. Oh, shh, 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 shh. It's them. Ooh. <gasps> this Veratu. Oh. Okay, they're gone. Oh, close call! That's why Woo! I wanted you to close the door. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good we did that. I'm going to pull Mati to the side. Should we share the password? That way this guy, he's, he's, he's like a nice guy. He's in already. I know, but like in case he gets caught, then he can see the password, and then he makes it think that, you know, he's meant to be here. I mean, you do you. What happens if the Ferrazzo catch you? They'll toss me out and destroy my work. Yeah, I, they do not seem like they like um, people who are not supposed to be in you. Can I get uh, can I roll for a vibe check? Like, is 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 he? I, I like that's what we call insight. It's checks. insight. Is yeah. he is he is he here to say what he does, or do I it's, it's sense any deception? Yeah, go ahead and make that insight check. I'm gonna do vibe as well. check. Can I as well? Yeah, of course. And I get advantage. That's a whopping four. Twenty five. <laughs> 20. All of you think that Graf is being sincere. I like this little guy. He's very cute. He's a little painter. I love artists. Let's pose. Graf, you know, you seem like a decent dude, so I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If you need to get in or talk to a Sfratu and they ask you for the password, it's just, it's Stoker. You say Ooh, Stoker. That is so helpful. Yeah. And you know what? That is way easier than the way I got in. How did, How did you, you get, get in? in? Across the hallway behind the mirror, there's another secret room, and that leads to a pool of blood. If you swim through it, you can go down and you'll emerge in the moat. Oh. oh. That sounds dirty. So that explains the red towel. Yeah. It was oh, gross. very unpleasant. Uh, yeah, it sounds so unpleasant. Uh, where did you say that was? Again? Across the hallway. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Behind the mirror. Matid poses. Okay. He uh, very quickly does a sketch. He turns his back. Matid has their arm outstretched, or their wing, their wing outstretched oh. up in yeah. the air. What about Chip? Normally he'd have like big beaming small hands on hips, but you know, because of recent events, he's going to do like a more moody, like kind of like that like, Spider-Man crouch. And he's going to wield his blade. Edgy. I, I think that's in character. I also would think that uh, Chip would do the, uh, the other MCU pose is when they make all the females do, which is facing away and showing their rear, but their, their, their head facing Turned around. Painter. Yeah. So, like, like the so first emphasizing buttocks, like yeah. the original Avengers yeah. poster. It's, yeah. it's it's Scarlett Johansson's pose in every paint. Every See, I, I would just think that Chip would lean into like, oh well, I'm supposed to be a vampire, so I'm gonna do like a vampire pose. He's doing he's doing his little his little assassin thing. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Some combination of vampire assassin, the assassin. Yeah. Cool. I'm a daywalker. <laughs> That's very cool. Chip Chip pulls out these these sunglasses we didn't know he had the entire time. <laughs> uh, yeah, Graf turns his back to you and begins feverishly working on his sketch. Okay, so I think we should probably leave you to it. Uh, we'll let you know if we find Dracula, okay? Okay, great. Yes, please, please. Real quick, Graf, what's that key to? The key? Oh, I don't know. I lifted it off of a Sferatu. Oh. You want it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll we'll take it. Let's borrow it. All right. What's the key made out of, by the way? It's just a very mundane looking iron key. Okay. Silver. He's not allowed. All right. So we need to add up to uh, the stairs and pick a direction. Which way should we go? So are you all heading up the stairs down to the T intersection? Do we want to check behind the mirror? No, oh. we, we know that's where the blood moat. I think it's an exit. Was there any, yeah. any other places in behind that mirror besides just out to the moat? No, just the blood pool that goes down into the moat. You've been very helpful, Graf. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I appreciate patrons of the art. Yeah, I'd hate if you, you know, turned around and stabbed us in the back. Oh, he turned his back to you first. Yeah. All right, Still, thanks, stands. Graf. Thank you. We'll be back. Uh, let me know if you find Dracula. Okay. We'll do. So we leave. And then where did you say the staircase was? 
immediately to the south, there's some stairs that begin going up, and then the corridor continues for probably 30 feet to the south. Commissary to the east. Southeast, yeah. And so let's go west for the Ekabit. So you go down to the T intersection, which branches out to the west and to the east. To the west, there are some stairs that go up a little bit, and then it's just an open passage to the east. So y'all are going west? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is the red. This is blue. No. I'd imagine that the red came from the mirror and the blue came from the commissary or some version well, of that. Well, the red is probably the blood drops from the moat. Correct. And then the blue is, yeah, probably paint. So just FYI, the red and the blue was up closer to where you all entered, on the northern side, like under the painting and under the mirror. Oh, they weren't at the T. Correct. Okay, yeah. okay. Then the, it's blue is probably the paint. And so we the are just, blood. we're looking at a, at, a, at a west or east direction. East had a stairway that went up and west. West has a stairway that goes up. East okay. is just an open pass. So let's go west. Seems like Graf only just went to the commissary over and over and didn't really find anything else. Yeah, let's go uh, Let's go west on that staircase. Yeah, so you all begin heading west. The stairs go up maybe 10 feet, and then the top of the stairs rounds a corner southward uh, and looks into a room where you hear the clanging of metal and the buzzing of wood. Are we at a door? Yeah, so the, after the passage turns south, the passage continues for another 30 feet, and there is no door. It just goes straight into an open room. What's in it? Y'all walk up to it, and it's a large chamber filled with the clanging and banging of construction and repairs being performed on furniture, jewelry, clothing. There's two rows of four workbenches, each tailored seemingly to different trades and crafts. Hmm. In the northeast corner, you spy one of the tables is paint-stained and turned on its side. Along the western wall is an upright, unfinished coffin. And to the south is a door, and then to the east is an open passage. Where's the coffin? It's along the western wall. And the painting was on the north. Are they, are they, and you said that they're repairing, or is this just like the manufacturing wing? They're just is it building ringing? new. I just don't know if these are battlers. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it's battlers okay. toiling away on stuff. And it seems like they are repairing things as opposed to creating things, to answer your question, uh, Chip. Can I walk up to a battler, the one that's working on the desk? Yeah. Is there a specific craft you want to investigate? I guess uh, the carpenter who's <laughs> doing the table. Yeah. Hey, Jesus. Um, uh, hey. He looks around. Me? No, I'm it's a bad joke. Just a friend of his. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I see you're working on this here, uh, this table. What what happened to it? Why are you repairing it? What happened? It's a, a, a gnome uh, who's working on it, and uh, he looks up at you. And he says, someone fell on the table and cracked the leg, so I'm just trying to repair it. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you know who that someone was? Or like, is this your, your trade as a carpenter? Not really typical me. I'm typically out there on the field, you know, breaking monster legs. I don't often repair them unless I'm summoned to. But uh, yeah, no, I just got summoned to fix this table. I've been known to do some carpentry on the side. Probably heard of me, Beowarg, kind of a big deal. As I said, slain many creatures, kind of a hero around these parts. Does Helga recognize anyone in here? Make a perception check. Oh, yeah. Did you say Beowurg? Beowurg. Uh, I only rolled a nine. No, this, you know that these are all, it seems like they're all battlers, but none of them stand out to you. Hmm. Maybe, tr maybe try. <laughs> <laughs> a few of them stop and look at you. They turn and look at you, and then they look at each other, and then get back to work. Mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> Barb fully bears all her teeth when she's making that sound. It's a very teethy sound. It's great. <laughs> Bail work. I'm a little turned around here. So is this, this is just like the repair, you know, manufacturing wing of uh, the vampire, vampire maintenance. Yeah. What is this? This is a workshop. This is where we fix things in the vampire. <gasps> who's, 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 who broke the table? Whose table is it? I don't know. I just get someone to fix things every once in a while. It's, you know, when I'm available, it's when I'm not off on a mission, doing important things, saving the kingdom, all that, you know. Who summoned you? It's the counts. Mm. So do they, do you go up and get the stuff from them or do they bring it down to you to fix? <laughs> of course we go up and get it. Yeah, okay, so you know how to get up there to Dracula's place and all those places up there? Yeah, good luck. The stairway. The stairway? Right where? To the east? Yeah, he just points vaguely to the east. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Uh, can I look at the painting? Uh, did I say there was a painting? Is it, wasn't it like, like turned on its side or There's something? There's a paint-stained table on paint its side. Paint-stained, got that's, it. That's thank you. Can I see if, and this is a bit of a stretch, is the paint from, uh, what's his face? Graf? Graf. Graf. Is this Graf's paint? 
Give yourself an inspiration die if you don't have one. All, all the paint supplies are missing. The table's just stained oh, with paint and it's graph. turned over on its side. Craft's a little borrower. Oh. Interesting. Craft might not be. <laughs> no, you know, he's, he's like, he's, he's, he's trying to make his way in this, this vampire world. He wants to paint Dracula to yeah. prove his worth. Could, could Barney look at the coffin and see how big it is and also if it has a name or anything or like embroidered? Do you want to see if it fits here? No. It's getting about that time. We got to make the preparations. <laughs> Dad, he already has a coffin and he's already in it. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, le- I, I will get to that with you in just a second, Barney. Uh, let me do one thing I, uh, I forgot to do here real fast. Beowar pulls you in a little close, Chip. He goes, hey, we're real busy here. Do you think you could lend a hand? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What can I do for you? We have a lot we need to get done. We could use some help cleaning up some clothing, delivering some letters to the aviary, or you could do something about this darn rat infestation. They're overrunning us. It's ridiculous. That'd be great. Rats. I'll deliver letters. That sounds what? fun. I've always wanted to be a mailman. Here. He shoves three letters into your hands. Take these over to the aviary. Make sure they're delivered. You got it. Where's the aviary? Again, he points vaguely in the easter in the uh, easterly right. direction. Who are the letters addressed to and from? Uh, they have no writing on them. They're just in sealed envelopes with like a wax seal, and there's nothing, no writing on them. In the sigil, there's no like thing on the wax seal. They all have the Vania sigil. Should we not ask about the rat infestation? I feel like that's the important. Want to resolve you? But you do. You do. Oh, I have yeah. Oh yeah, the coffin. Yeah, I'm gonna hit, hit the coffin here real fast. Uh, so you you were trying to see like if it had a name on it or something. Mm-hmm. Do you want to make like a perception or investigation In, check? Yeah. Oh. A perception it is. <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> you give me the option, I'm gonna go for the one with a higher modifier. You notice that there's there there's no name on it. It doesn't seem to be personalized. It's you know it's roughly it's a little bigger than you, Barney. But you notice that. There are many nails sticking out of it. It's really weird that it has that many nails. Maybe it's poor quality. Maybe it's broken. Who knows? Maybe it's a kink. Maybe it's an Iron Maiden. Nails sticking out of it. Like Maybe it's Maybelline. Et- <laughs> like, like inward or like out of it? Both. Like, ep- so like just- not fully driven in and some that have been driven in all the way and this are coming out the other poor side. Poor quality. Yeah, shoddy craft. Who, who, who made, who, who, who's is this? Matt, is anyone around who's working on it? Isn't Barney a carpenter or wasn't he? He has some he carpenter. Sweet? Yeah. Remember the heart thing? Pa- yeah. You yeah. could ask uh, Beowar. Beowar. Because he because Beowarg was doing carpentry. Yeah. What's the deal with this coffin? Why is it so poorly made? Oh, that's for no one in particular. That's just an old relic. Old relic from who? It's been there for as long as I can remember. And it recently broke? It's just been there. I don't know. It's just been there. You guys haven't fixed it. You aren't doing a good job. No one works on it. There's no work order for it. Does it look like it's been used, for lack of a better word? Is it like, dusty? Like, like, does it look like someone laid in it for a while? Like a dead body or a body or any... Does it have like? It's very dusty. Huh. Can I go in it? Just do for it, the heck of do it? Do it. Yeah. We like sit in it or yeah, like stand in it. Yeah, I just go like, it, what, is it propped up or is it laying down? Careful, the nails. Yeah, it's you're like very, propped you're up. very injured right now. Oh, don't do it. Yeah, I, I very carefully step inside of it. I'm trying and, to see Gus's face. And, and, I, and I cross my arms. Make a dexterity check with advantage, because you specified you're being very careful. Very excited. That's a a That's twenty. All right, yeah. Uh, you very carefully get into it because the nails are rusty and sticking out everywhere. Uh-huh. Uh, you managed to avoid the one point of damage I was going to give you. Mateen goes up and he goes, <laughs> boom! <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty solid fit for you. Hmm. Okay. Make it a, an investigation check. Oh. So I'm trying to see if this is like some sort of weird portal or something. I spy 18. The weird thing is it won't move. Like when you get in and out of it, it's like it's it's a, it's, a, it's a fixed right. It's like a fixed to the wall. Maybe it's just it's just not rotating at all. Can I like see if there's like a doorway hidden behind yeah. it? Button or should we close it? Grooves perhaps? Oh yeah, close it, close <gasps> it. Yeah, as you all are are looking at it, three Sfratu walk in to the workshop from the northern uh, entrance for the entrance you all came in from, mm-hmm. and they look around the room. Everyone make a either like I guess like a stealth check or a deception check. I'll leave it up to you all. I will do stealth. Oh, it's now one, but I have advantage. I will do deception. Nat, 20, 27. Don't see me. Don't perceive me. I'm not even here. 15. 19. 16, but I might have something. I have something if I fail it. I I have a thing. That was with your advantage? Yes. They, like, survey the room, look around. They look at you for a second, Elka, and then they turn uh, and exit the room to the eastern corridor. (sighs) 
How did you like grow up in this place with those dudes creeping I, around? I didn't really see them very much. I, w I haven't really been in this area of the Vampire. They spookies. Anyway, so now that they've they've left the room, what are we all doing with this? Uh, Closing this the coffin. coffin. Closing the yeah, door. Close me in. Ha 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 ha! Look at me, I am in the coffin. Time to go nannies. Nannies. It's like we're a bunch of Forever. tourists <laughs> taking pictures in here. You all uh, close it, and nothing seems to happen. It gets dark for you, Chip. I, we open the door and go. All right, Chip, smile. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so when, nothing when, happened. Yeah, when they open it, or yeah, okay. Can we open it? Yeah, you open it up, and uh, there's Chip. And I hiss at him. <laughs> Does Chip feel any different or look any different? Make a. Perception check, Elga. 21. Nah, good old chip. Good. <laughs> Barney, <laughs> <hate> you guys. <laughs> Tap the walls around it to see if it echoes, like, as if there's a chamber behind it or below like if it. it's hollow? Yeah, like. Yeah, make a, let's call that an investigation check. There's gotta be something in this coffin. There's gotta be. Nat 20. Wow. It's all solid stone, so it's hard to tell. It's a solid stone wall, so it's not, like, knocking on drywall or, yeah. or wood where you can tell if it's hollow. It's it's all stone. Can we do another little, like, uh, like uh, uh, Elga was able to find that little latch. Could we do another little investigate -y? Yeah, groovy. Do, like, put, like Look for walking buttons, your latches, fingers around it. Scrapes. Yeah, whoever wants to do that can make an investigation check. Uh, we'll, I'll pitch in. Maybe this thing is just so old, it's like solidified itself to the wall just from time. Fourteen. Nine. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the coffin moves. It just seem. It does seem like it's a fix. There's no scrapes on the floor from it, like moving out of the way, like the door, bef or like the other secret door that you found. Hmm. Is this well, a red herring? Are, yeah. they, are they messing with us? Yeah. I think we should go move on, move on. <laughs> okay. I, I I put Chip puts his hands up straight and like kind of does like a hover walk over to Barney. Blah. <laughs> 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 Roll me a dexterity check, Chip. Is this for see if he scrapes on his way out? Dexterity check. Are you leaving gently and carefully? He didn't say that. No, nope, he said he was, he said he was <laughs> messing around. What'd you roll? What'd you roll? <laughs> <Number one>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's already where he needs to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, uh, you're goofing around trying to get out of the coffin and you step on a nail uh, and it goes up through your shoe. Uh, doing <laughs> one point of damage to Chip. Oh uh, no! This Wait, are best. you down? <laughs> yeah. Chip is at oh, zero hit yeah. points. This is so good. I go down. Can <laughs> this I is so good? Try and stabilize him. Yeah, you're able to stabilize him there. So he stays at what zero and can't move? Correct, unless he gets some kind of healing. Do <laughs> you have healing? Ah. <laughs> I don't. I, I'll go. All, All right. right. Genuinely don't have anything yeah, I can do to help. Make a, right. Since you're stabilizing him, Barney, make a medicine check. See if you roll a nat 20, yeah. then yeah, he comes up to one. Yeah. I rolled a 20, but not a nat it's 20. It's a 15. Nah, so he's at zero. It, here's what I'll do. We could just leave him here. <laughs> just close the door. They never, they never mess with this coffin. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> You're like in limbo, like in the afterlife, Chip. You, all you hear is the ringing of hammers from the workshop. Carol, I'm coming, baby. <laughs> um, I'm going to cast aid. What does that do? Uh, is a permanent increase of HP for eight hours on three creatures. Oh, how okay. much we get? Chip gets five. Whee! Uh, Barney gets five. I don't care. It's so fun. Do you live in on the... Uh, 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 I would like some. Why not? I mean, I was going to give it to Matid. Oh, yeah, you should give it to Matid. And Matid gets five. In case they okay. touch a screw or something like that. Guys, really quick, I need to go to the bunk. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an ATM here. Yes! <laughs> uh, Beowarg sees you all doing all this and uh, kind of, like, shouts over. You guys need a hammer? No! Wait. Mind your business. Oh, the nails. Yeah, we do actually. Yes, I uh, give me them. Just don't throw it. <laughs> <laughs> throw it, I dare you. He hands you a hammer. Here you go. Don't drop it. Be careful. This thing, I killed like six monsters with this just last week. How many nails? Lots. He doesn't hand you a nail. He no, there's already nails in no, it. In the coffin. Oh, there's lots of them. I, I hammer the ones that are sticking out. Yeah, you um, hammer one of the nails, and the first one you hammer in, immediately the back of the coffin opens up. Hey guys, are you enjoying the show? You better be. 
But if you're really enjoying it, which we hope you are sincerely, you guys could support us directly by becoming a first member. First membership is essentially our patronage model. You could join for just $5.99 a month over at stinkydragonpod.com slash first, and it gets even cheaper if you buy a whole year subscription. But we have a ton of perks that come along with this membership, including bonus content like Second Win, which is our weekly dungeon master and player deep dive on the latest episode, as well as Show Me the Magic, which is a making of show for Stinky Dragon Adventures, our full length puppet show that you guys might remember. Uh, Additionally, we have an ad free experience. So all episodes are ad free if you are a first membership. So you could watch those over at stinkydragonpod.com or you could sign up for the RSS feed, which means it adds those ad-free episodes to whatever podcast platform you are using, for example, Spotify. We also have monthly subscriber events like live streams, Discord events, exclusive merch, and so much more for our first members. So please do consider signing up if you want to support the show and love what we are doing. And if you become a first member, there's actually an event coming up on March 11th at four o'clock central time. It's gonna be on our Discord for first members only. So make sure you sign up if you wanna come. It's an event called Am I the Stinker? This is an event where Gus will talk with the players and judge whether D&D rules lawyering is justified or not. And of course, we are gonna get the audience participation involved. So yeah, definitely not gonna be dramatic whatsoever. There's definitely gonna be no arguing. I'm being sarcastic, by the way, if you couldn't tell, I'm sure it's gonna be full of a lot of tension in the best way possible. So come on over, sign up for first membership and join us March 11th at four o'clock central time in our discord for Am I the Stinker? It's gonna be very fun. And then next up, we will also be doing a very special stream on March 21st at 10 a.m. Central at stinkydragonpod.com slash live to celebrate ba 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 the Groteth Dice Set releasing. Yes, try to say Groteth Dice Set five times really fast. It's a tongue twister. But yes, our new dice will be releasing on March 21st at 10 a.m. Central, and we're doing a stream to celebrate. So set those alarms so not only you could get the dice set, but also join us for that live stream. This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon is brought to you by Me Undies. We love Me Undies, and they have a brand new product available called the Contoured Pouch and Ball Caddy. The micro modal sling keeps things separated and lifted, and a lot of people say it's very sophisticated technology. I don't know if my brain could wrap around it, but apparently it's very comfortable and makes people feel very confident down there in the nether regions. I absolutely love MeUndies. The material they use is so soft and so comfortable. I really have no idea how they do it, but I have tons of different pairs of underwear from MeUndies that I've acquired over the years, as well as some pajama pants or lounge pants, uh, or for me, everyday pants if I'm staying home, as well as sports bras and tons of other stuff that they offer. You really cannot go wrong with MeUndies. From all black classics to fun, expressive prints, MeUndies has a look for everyone. Plus they come in sizes from extra small to 4XL, guaranteeing a flattering cut for every body. MeUndies also isn't just about underwear. Like I mentioned before, they have a lounge collection featuring joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. And MeUndies signature fabric is as soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater. It's really true. It's breathable, stretchy, and so comfy, guys. It's so comfy, making it ideal for all day wear. They use sustainably sourced materials and work with partners that care for their workers. And if you guys are not happy with your first pair of undies with their problem-free philosophy, it's on MeUndies. Good things come in big packages at MeUndies, so get 20% off on your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash dragon. That is MeUndies.com slash dragon for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. This episode is also brought to you by First Leaf. If you guys are wine lovers like me, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I found the most personalized wine club that has amazing wines and exclusive perks, and it's called First Leaf. As a First Leaf member, I get to discover new wines I'm guaranteed to enjoy, and that is because First Leaf gets to know you and your unique preferences. To start, I answered a few questions on their website, very easy, about what flavors I like, how often I like to drink wine, and if I prefer red, white, or rosé. And based on my answers, First Leaf curated an amazing selection of wines just for me. And when I rate those wines, my wine selection gets even more tailored. 
I loved this experience. The quiz was really easy to do. You got to talk about what wines you like, what foods you like, what flavors and everything like that. And it really tailors the experience to find out exactly what you would like. I had some wines delivered. One of my favorites was the Grandino di Pietra. It's a 2002 heritage red wine blend from Italy. It has some balsamic flavors, cloves, plum. It was delicious. It was perfect. They were right on the money and the process was so easy. And I can't wait to try some new wines from them. So best of all, I get to choose when I want my box delivered and how often I get new assortments of wine. I don't drink that often, so when I do, I love to have choices. So it's great to set up that customization for you. And being part of the First Leaf Wine Club also has its perks. As a member, I get access to their incredibly helpful wine concierge. So if I want wine pairing advice or to talk about the wines in my box, I could always speak with one of their experts. Plus, I get member exclusive pricing on every order. It's awesome. So you guys could join the club today and discover new wines you'll love with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash stinky to get your first box. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash stinky. Tryfirstleaf.com slash stinky. Hope you guys enjoy. Yes. What's inside? It's hard to see. It's very dim. It's candlelit. Bale works this. Give me my hammer back. I hand it back. I hand it back. I don't. I, I, Did you guys really never find this after having this coffin with nails that are loose all this time? No one's ever tried to fix the nail. Pretty he just smiles at you and shrugs. Oh, he messing with us. Glasses He's a little bit of yeah. um, I got really good eyesight right now, so I go into the thing. But, dude, I'm just telling you now. If you find a cool knife, I call dibs. <laughs> so you look in, and it's a quaint candlelit library with a rather empty bookcase on the western wall and two chewed-up couches, one to the north and another to the south. There's currently two battlers sitting on the couches reading. What? They knew about this. This is their little break room. <laughs> they kind of look up at you, then look back down at their books. Is this your break room? One of them looks up and just kind of like nods and gets back to reading. What's your re- is that break room? What's your reading? He holds, like, the cover of the book up to your face. It says, Ales from the Stinky Dragon. That's mm. funny. All right, now tell she, me she every says, book on the shelf. Great. It's a, it's a miasmatic manual of mixology for beginner bartenders. Oh. I'm, I'm hoping to be a bartender one day. Oh, what's your, what's your name? It's a cookbook. Cardinal. Cardinal. We can go to the chapter that we're in and look and see what yeah. we're oh, supposed yeah, to go yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't get it. It's a, a a Kenku, so he's looking at he looks at Matid and then gets looks back in his book. Oh, Kenku, oh, Kenku dude, that's I don't like, like you guys are like distant relatives, Kenku's bird bird people. I go to the empty bookshelf. <laughs> it's rather empty. There are some oh, books oh, on it, oh, but it's okay. you know it's it, it's it's not a well stocked library. That's the only bookshelf. Yeah, so that's not a good library, dude. <laughs> can, can I borrow that letter? Ladder? The letter. Ladder. Got three. Sure. Can I take them and kind of off the side to open them? That's illegal. He's breaking the seal. Yeah. I, ripping the, 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 not the seal, but ripping the paper. Chip backs like he doesn't see this. Okay. Yeah. You open one up. Yeah. And then as you open it, the entire letter and envelope poofs and disappears into red mist. Well, I can't mend it. <sighs> Marnie, Marnie, Marnie. <laughs> Can I try and mend it? <laughs> what are you going to mend? <laughs> the atoms. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'll take the other letters back. Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> He's going to put all those little electrons and protons back. <laughs> well, most letters are able to be mended. <laughs> Cardinal looks up and says, Shh. Oh. Shh. I stay back. Oh, no, that's the Kinku's job. They yeah, I know. The I'm saying you say. <laughs> yeah, I could do this too. Ah, asserting dominance. Yes. Uh, are there any grooves on the wall? Or uh, can I, like, move some of the books around and see if there's another secret latch? It's just Chip going up to the bookshelf and just shaking it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make an investigation check. Okay. I will go with my investigative partner. That's a 13. 17. No, doesn't seem anything suspicious about it. Nothing out of the ordinary. Mm. No manga? Uh, no, there's just a couple of books on there, but uh, no, nothing with drawings. Mm. Two couches, one dude. Oh, wait, there is one with drawings. What? Yeah. Is it Demon Slayer? You see, uh... Is uh, it X-Men? Uh, <laughs> nice. Give yourself an expiration if you don't have one, John. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's uh, a book that's filled with drawings. It's Fantastic Beasts and How to Cook Them. Oh, good <laughs> lord. It's a graphic cookbook dealing with monstrous recipes. Well, where, so well, where are we? We, we went... We went out of the, the workshop. Coffin. West of the workshop. Into a secret coffin room. 
Well, they did. When we asked where the counts were bringing or, or the go to the counts, they pointed to the east. So maybe we should just continue that way instead. I'm with Elga. I step through the coffin door carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else in this room besides the bookcase and the cat? Mm, no, just a couple of couches and a couple of uh, battlers reading, taking the load off. It's like a break room. Or... Yeah. Yeah, which we asked them about already. And, uh, d- did you d- confirm just one dude? Two. Dude, yeah. who's the other dude? It's an older elf lady. She's like mean mugging you, giving you a side eye. Wait, do I recognize her? Make a history check with advantage. We should see if you recognize either of them. We got 14. You think you've seen her in the past. You remember her being very mean. Mm. You know her as Mrs. Loftybottom. <laughs> That's great. Mrs. Loftybottom. That's as fun for I'll get to say. <laughs> My favorite queen song. Is she like a... Like some type of nanny or teacher or like servant. All you remember about her is that she loves cats. She's a battlerette. Oh, do you want to share that information maybe? Emma did. That's Mrs. Lofty Bottom. She's not very nice, but she loves cats. So maybe if we're trying to ask these people questions, you could show them Gigi. Oh, I do a little like magic trick and like twiddle my fingers around my, my, uh, uh, my, t- my <laughs> talent. No, my hands. And then poof, out comes Gigi. And he does a little mew. Uh, she looks very lovingly at the cat, but then like gives you a disgusted look, Matid. Well, that's not necessary. And then she looks back in her book. I put I put Gigi right up to her and be like, would you like to pet the kitty? You seem like you're having a bad day. Petting a kitty always makes me feel good. Except for when my wife dies. It doesn't really solve that. <laughs> she looks at you, Chip, and says, Did you know between you and me, uh-huh. there are over 1,400 species of bats? Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, good. That's, that's Why is that good. just it's pretty relevant to Olga. Uh, Madame Bottom, we're trying to find our way to the top of the tower to find our friend's residence. Do you help us maybe with some information on how to find that? She like claps her hands. Shoo! Shoo! Get well, out! I'm, I'm ready to give, the, to, to, to serve this woman's demands. <laughs> I hiss at her. I, that, that's my friend! <laughs> Get your bat facts out of here! <laughs> Is the hiss because she likes between, cats or? Uh, Miss Bottom, between you and me, <laughs> I don't like you. Well! <laughs> Oh, what's wrong with what's wrong with the kinku? Oh, bird. <gasps> oh. oh, she's got a book. Yes, I smacked the book out of her hand. Oh. Oh. oh, you see, this is the kind of thing I would expect from you. A bat would never do anything like this. She looks at you, Olga. I don't care about your bat. Did you know that bats have few natural predators? Disease is one of them. Why are you talking to me when you've been so mean to me in the past? Miss Lofty Bottom. She like narrows her eyes. Oh, fun breath, right? Correct. Mm. She picks her book up and then goes back to reading it. Interesting. You know, interesting reaction. This lady's bringing down the mood for the whole party. I'll take another this. I think we let her mellow in her bad vibes, gang. We're not going to let her bring us down, Miss Tootie Bottom. Nailed it. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Oh. <laughs> Matit kills her. I wanted to leave one of the Mort apples. <laughs> <laughs> As you all are turning to leave, Barney, she grabs you and says, Hey, don't what? forget, like cats, bats clean themselves. Remember that? I I'll never forget. Could never forget such a thing. All right, should we go to the uh, east corridor that they kept motioning towards? So just to remind you, you know, when you're in the workshop, there is a door to the south and then an open passage corridor to the east. Okay, let's go east. Did we come in through the door? We came We came in from the north where there's no door. We went to the coffin to the west, and then there's to the east is the, uh, from the workshop is what he's describing. Oh, there's a, a passageway to the east from the workshop? Correct. Yes. And that's the one that, uh, that, uh, Bulwerg, Ball, Ball, Bailwerg, Bailwerg, Bailwerg was referencing. Yeah, when they're kind mm, of I thought pointing meant back down the where stairs. Where we're supposed to take our three letters. But also there's like, well, a- I thought Mindy would be a good solution. To- <laughs> <laughs> there's also a door, though. Do we want to, like, just, like, really quick bit by? Because we got a key. Bailwerg. Yeah. What's through that door? That's a closet. What do you keep in there? Junk. Cool. I look in there. One man junk is another man's treasure. You know, you open up the closet Out to give a little a giant in. dog named Junk. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, rips oh, the chip apart. <laughs> doing exactly five points of damage. 
Yeah. So uh, you walk over and open up the door. Make a dexterity saving throw. Check. <laughs> Gus is trying to kill Blaine's character. Not 2025. <laughs> right as you open it up, the door opens, and then just like a huge pile of junk just falls out, uh -huh. filling up the, the room, the area right in front of it with a bunch of useless things. And then right as you do that, you know, it makes a loud noise. Uh -huh. Two Sferatu walk in from the eastern passageway that you all were just about right. to go to. I say, Miss Lofty Bottom, you got to stop opening the junk drawer. drawer. <laughs> Goodness me. Clean this up, Miss Lofty Bottom. Miss Lofty Bottom did this. Make a deception check. <laughs> 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 His lofty bottom did this. Everyone else can also either make a deception check or a stealth check if you want to try to like oh, hide man. yourself. Oh you have you have inspiration. Yeah, I rolled an eleven, but I'm gonna roll an inspiration on that one. I'm doing another stealth check. Uh, I rolled a nine. I rolled a one. Fourteen <sighs> to make a three. On what deception? I did, oh, a, man. I did a, a seven. Only one of us had said we should just go through the east corridor. If only. <laughs> I, I would have had you all bump right into them <laughs> in the eastern <laughs> yeah, corridor there. Yeah, it would happen. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they hear all the noise and, you know, their eyes immediately turn to that closet and mm -hmm. they walk straight over to you all. Bonjour. Hello. Identify yourselves. My name, Elga. Madame, you are okay. And these are my friends, Elga's friends. Who are they? Elga's friends. What are they doing here? Being Elga's friends. <laughs> Visiting Elga. This tracks. Why are you in the Delza dock? Shouldn't you be upstairs? Well, you know, I'm being childlike and exploring, you know, as children, young, very young children do. Full of wonder, you know. Yeah, just being a little curious. I'll let you make a deception check with advantage. What's uh, Elga's deception modifier? Plus four. Ooh. Nice. That's what Chips uh, is. 18. Yeah. What do you say to that, Gustavo? All right. Take the stairwell. Don't spend too much time down here with your friends. Okay, thank you, Elga's friends. Thank you, too. Everyone say thank you. Merci beaucoup. Blah. <laughs> you like vampires. They uh, leave the room, uh, exiting out the northern uh, passageway. Chris just nodded silently on an audio I, podcast. In, 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 in my <laughs> canon right there, Barney was going to play as if he was a mute. Yep. So if they talked to him, he would have just gestured or written like, I guess, you know. Yep. That mm -hmm. was his plan. There mm. you go. <laughs> the mute on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> Well, we are describing it very thoroughly to the audience, yes. All right, we go down the corridor. You're just going to leave all that clutter out there? Hey, Miss Lofty Bottom. All right, all right. I mean, that's up to you. I do I do a little, like, two fingers on the eyes, two fingers on bail work, because I'm like, I see you. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Barney, look at the clutter, see if there's anything that might be of note. Of note? I mean, there's a, like, like a, a well-chewed femur. I mean, you could probably use that as a club. That might be worth something. A well-chewed femur. Yeah. It's a bone. Okay. I'll take that. Oh, there's another weapon. What? There's a sword, but it's Whoa. twisted into a pretzel. Okay. That's fun. Pretzel sword. Like, purposefully done so? Or, uh, no, it was by accident. <laughs> well, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> what is that question? <laughs> like, that's your face. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Out of all the <laughs> oh, there's been multiple murders this episode, and one just happened. <laughs> I'll take my femur and get it. Uh, uh, so, so, so that's it a, a pretzel sword and a femur. I mean, there's some candles, there's a broom, and this is all the junk. Yeah, why don't we just shove it in like Sherry Bobbins did on The Simpsons? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I, I want to get going down the east. You're gonna kind of like reset it how it was, just kind of shove everything back shove in, it and, and close the door. Close the door, yeah. take a broom. Yeah, it's made of wolf whiskers. If you cut Weird. every corner, it is really not so bad. Yeah, you all shove all the clutter back into the closet and very quickly close the door for the next unsuspecting person. To the east. To the window. I was thinking that too. I don't to know the why. stairs. <laughs> I'm going to start listening to Elga more. <laughs> it's almost as if this is my place. It's almost as if it is. You walk out the passageway to the east and it kind of dead ends and then there's a corridor that goes out to the left to the north and then a door to your right to the south. Uh, so like we hit a fork? Correct. This isn't that hallway on the east that we saw, right? No, no, you're further south from there. So the like I said, there's a door to the south and then the corridor continues to the north and you can see that there are a couple of branches off to the north in various directions, well, left and right. Let's keep heading south. Like into that corridor? Why not? To the south, it's a door. There's a wooden door and it's got a word carved into it. What does the word say? It says bestiary. Bestiary. Oh. 
That's where they keep the beasts. <laughs> Very good, Barney. Where would we be without you, Barney? Probably further along this treacherous <laughs> path. One plus one letter. <laughs> yeah. Um, I say we uh, possibly avoid that one. I like animals. Never mind. Let's go do inside. We, do we hear any noises through the door? Yeah. What kind of sounds? You hear like the moving, like uh, the rattling of chains. Oh, like, thi- like things are being chained down. Should we should check what the what the north leads to? He said it branches off in a few places. Yeah. Yeah. If you go north, there's immediately a branch to the east. And then a little north of that, there's a branch to the west. And then even further at the end of the corridor is a branch to the east. So that's a three-way. Just, oh, good Lord, my dude. <sighs> All right. It's winding past. It's a good thing Barney thought to uh, make a map. I have one. I'm making one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I feel like my map almost is like hurting me more than helping me. Yeah. One time we did this in the infinite campaign and I ended up just, I think, making it harder for myself. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to my gut, my chip gut. The first path to the east, what does that lead to uh, from, if we go north? Northeast. Yeah, if we go north and then look down that first path to the east, uh, you see it's a descending staircase that ends in a T intersection going north and south. Oh my Good. God. Any signage Lord. in this place? No. And then the. We're just like, okay, we're just like going down and, and tracing our steps. And so if we go back and go to the west, which is the only western one from this corridor, where does that go to? I think we're going to make some choices here, I guys. There was, there was two paths to the west, were there not? There was one just to the... One. Well, you came from one that went to the west. Yeah, and then it came to a hallway. One, and the south was the bestiary. And then north were all these off paths, right? Correct. And there's two to the east and one to the west. Yeah. Gotcha. The one to the west, it's the uh, staircases that lead down. And then the corridor turns to the north. Okay. I say we go upwards. We need, like, up progression by and by up you mean south oh oh no 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 well, up mean, like, yeah. oh. so which of these stairways I, I haven't been keeping track of that which of these stairways have been going upwards the one to the east when you you came out this way then you turn north and yeah. the first one immediately to the east the it, it does go up slightly let's try let's go yeah let's go that way let's try so we, we're at a t well we yeah. get to a t that goes north south it, right correct it's the t intersection that goes north and south from there there's a descending staircase to the north that seems to turn to the west and then to your south, the corridor goes a little bit, and there's a door there. And that goes up a little bit to the south? No, you said descending. Desc- descending descending is- staircase to the north, then to the south. There's no stairs there. It's let's just go the corridor down. continues. And So I say south then. Okay, let's go to the door. Yeah, there's a wooden door here. Is it locked? You can open it. A sign? Does it got a sign? No sign. No sign. Any I, sounds? I, listen, check for traps. If you want to listen, make an, a perception check. If you want to check for traps, make an investigation check. Okay. All right. Let's double team it. I'm going to do perception. I got higher perception. I'll do perception. I'm not even going to bother telling you my role. 23. <laughs> 21. Perception. 16 investigation. I was just sitting in the hall with her fingers in her ears going, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Planning to kill Miss Lottie Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> She's now number one on my list. <laughs> you don't detect any traps. When you listen, you can you feel like you can hear almost like the scraping of chains every now and then and then footsteps. Oh, they must be doing the monster mash in there. It was, uh, it was a graveyard or smash. Some sort of vile torture chamber. I open the door. <laughs> <laughs> you open the door, and it's a rather confined room, smelling of copper with crimson stained floors, and there's a stack of barrels to the north and to the south. Obviously, from the north side, you all just enter through a door, and then to the east is a swinging double door, and then to the west is like an open corridor that seems to lead down. Is there someone in here? Currently, no. And it's crim... Are- it's co- there's copper with crimson stained floor. Smelling, smelling of copper with crimson stained floor. Smelling of copper. That'd be blood. That's blood. Yeah, yeah cuz co- blood typically has like a coppery smell, right? But he looks up. There's a stone ceiling about 20 feet overhead. Could I look in one of the barrels? Yeah. You go over to the barrels and it seems like there's a liquid inside of it. Mm-mm. Could I tell if it's blood? It smells like blood to you. Okay. Could I taste it? Yeah. Dip a little thingy in there. Yeah. And he looks away. You know, the barrels have, um, you know, lids on the top and the bottom. They're on, they're laying on their side and there's like a little cork stopper in the side. You open it up. And it's just like filled to the brim. Uh, you give it a little taste. Ooh, yeah. Goat blood. Hmm. Goat blood. Goat yeah. blood. Oh no. Remember that mountain goat we saw? Oh. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a... No, he's alive. We saved him. No. Oh, yeah. Is there a, a chain on the floor anywhere or anything? No, but as that moment, as you're looking around, a battler wanders in from that western corridor, leading a tethered goat into the room. Okay. Just the man we were looking for. 
Hey, you! He kind of looks up at you and then uh, looks back down, continuing on his uh, on his way. Where do we? Where's stairs up? <laughs> A little turned around. We're from Scam Sylvania. I like how you're just telling people where you're from, even though they're not questioning you at all. <laughs> <laughs> Master of deception. <laughs> Our rogue. It's a dwarf who's wandered in with this goat, and uh, he says, yeah, you go over there, over there. And does he indicate where when he says this? Uh, I was told to take that goat. He looks at you and then looks at the goat. He just kind of shrugs his shoulders and gives you the chain that's leading the goat and then wanders back to the west. Thank you. A new friend. Hmm. Hello, goat. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to die. That is your goat now, Barney. That goat will not survive this campaign. Everyone, you get a pet. <laughs> so congratulations. Did I recognize that battler? Make a history check with advantage. Oh my god, I rolled two ones. Oh no. No, it didn't seem familiar to you. I think that was your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I didn't say this. It's 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 a really big goat. It's a giant goat. Oh no. Like horse size riding goat? Yeah, it's probably about that size. Wow. Okay. You get a lot of blood out of that guy. <laughs> it's like mileage. Yeah. <laughs> you pat it on the back. Wow, that's a lot of blood. A lot of goat power in there. Here's the problems that's going to arise <laughs> from this new companion. We are trying to blend in here. We are trying to seem like we are counts of this area, and I do not think walking around with the food with on snack. the chain. I don't think so. The dwarf wanders back into the room from the west, this time with a chain leading a giant brown bear. <gasps> I'll let him keep that one. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, he okay. doesn't even look at you all. He walks over to the center of the room and he slices open a vein and begins draining oh. blood from the bear into a barrel. Bummer. Anyways. Let's leave this place. Should we go through those double doors? Yeah. To the east? Yeah, it looks like it's swinging double doors to the east. And that's not where they came in. You said the west is where they came Correct. in. Correct. Okay. This one came in from the west. I feel like that is connected to the bestiary, the one to the west. Yeah, so we made we a should, circle. We should go east. Mm. Okay, yeah, double doors. Elga, you said you were going through first, right? Yeah. Which double door do you go through, the left side or the right side? I swing them both equally open in the middle. And then Chip makes like little ch -ch 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 -ch, like like spurs. Uh, She's a little cowgirl. You ain't seen none of this in this town. <laughs> <laughs> are you taking the goat with you, Barney? Yes. Okay. Oh, I know. We are now going to be rolling at disadvantage that. on every check we do. I we <laughs> Marley, I don't know if we should take that through here. It might be hard to navigate. They can't leave it here. The dwarf begins leading the bear back out to the west. Oh, so it lives. He just gets a little bit of blood out of it. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's fine. Can I pull Chip aside really quick? Hey there. Hey, it's Chip Haney. How Ch you doing? Chip and I are going to have a moment, okay? Okay. Chip, hey. If we kill this goat, huh? the goat won't be a problem anymore. Uh. <laughs> so... Which means Barney won't be a problem in At this point. And you're not part of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wash my hands of this. I don't want any part. I will distract Barney. Uh -huh. And you will do what you do best. Kill goat. <laughs> <laughs> Barney, make an animal handling check. Oh, God. Oh God. It's going to kick Barney, isn't it? That's a 17. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, the goat's really stubborn. It doesn't want to follow you, but uh, you managed to uh, get it to continue to it's follow fine. you. It's fine. It's fine. Let's just go. So, Elga, you push open both doors and walk through. You nearly hit a battler who's coming out uh, in, say, the one's in, 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 in the opposite, yeah. opposite yeah. direction. <laughs> but uh, they definitely dodge out of the way at the last second. Say, oh, well, careful. And they keep going. They keep walking past you. My apologies. You know, I'm very familiar with these parts of the castle, town, area, thing. Spire. <laughs> You, uh, you know, you burst through the swinging doors and you find yourself in a large dining hall bustling with a cacophonous carousal. There's two long tables running parallel through the center of the room, occupied by probably a dozen or so battlers, all sipping from rusty goblets. To the north, there's a few tapped barrels resting on a bench next to some empty goblets. No outlet? There is a door to the east. So like on the opposite side of the where Correct. we came in. Okay. You guys want to head to that door? Do I recognize anyone in here? Oh, oh make a history check with advantage. Are the battlers vamps? Make the call. I don't know. Because if they're eating blood, well, we don't know what are they eating? They're drinking out of rusty goblets. I mean, I assume they're bats or like some type. Of well, he said like it was like a uh, there was a gnome and there yeah. was a dwarf and yeah, maybe it's just all they eat. Like that's all they have. They have no choice. I don't know. Interesting. I don't think I recognize anyone, but just in case they go. Ee, ee, ee. No response. Oh, it's gonna oh. happen. No what was his name? Quiff, Quiffler, Quaffler, Quiff, Quiggly, Quiffly, Quiffly, Quiffly. Sounds like a Quiffly Yeah, you do not recognize anyone. Elka. Did you have a feed, Quiffly? 
I did. It was not my responsibility. Okay, I didn't know. He uh, could take care of himself okay, independently. She didn't water her. She didn't blood her cliffly before she left. <laughs> Try explaining that phrase to anybody <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah. As you all are standing there, two Sfratu walk in from the room you all were just in, coming in through the double doors. They nearly bump into you. Hello again. Me, Elga, remember with my friends. Same ones? No, these are different ones. Uh, what are you doing down here? They look at you, Elka. Again, just exploring, you know, like kids do. Uh, Elka, are you lost? Uh, Barney, make an animal handling check. Okay, uh, no. Chip is turning his back to just kind of join a group of battlers. 23. Okay. Hoofer's great. I love Hoofer. Ho- Hoofer is about <laughs> to let a loud, really loud bleed out, but you like kind of okay. uh, hold his uh, hold his mouth and keep him from making too much noise. I thought you said he was going to bleed out. No, bleat. Uh, bleat. He has, he's like, uh, no, so he like bleats. That. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just a little lost. Could you guys actually help me get back to my chambers? I'll say make a deception check with advantage because you're not entirely lying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a 23, a 23. Wow. They uh, look rather annoyed with you and they just kind of point vaguely to the northeast and turn around and leave out to the west. I imagine these guys just kind of hover, right? They just got like a creepy little gate to them. So, so that could be through that door, maybe. Or where we first started in the initial hallway where we could have just gone to the east down that corridor. Hmm. Wait, and instead they, we went to the west. Did they? Did, were they motioning in the room towards the end of the room? But it seemed more like they were pointing in a direction rather than something in the room. Oh. Well, there's a door on the opposite side of this, let's go, let's go which is to the east. Let's so boogie, gang. Let's go through there. Anything of, an, of interest in here to anybody? No. Pretzel weapons? Hopefully this is not the area where the red wedding happens. You guys would love that. As you're walking through, one of the uh, the battlers tugs at you, Chip. Is he tug my tail? He you know, tugs on your uh, your cloak. Oh, okay. Ah, ha. Hey there. Hey, you're uh, you're the guy that's taking the, the letters to the aviary, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm a bit turned around. Where Where is the aviary? He uh, points to the north. Well, actually, he points to the northwest. Okay. He goes, hey, can, uh, can, can you all do any more work? Can you do any work for me? I, what do you got? What do you got? We need to uh, get rid of some, uh, some carcasses from the bestiary, take them over to the refusiary. Mm-hmm. Mm. So many side quests. <laughs> we could, uh, could use some help, uh, maybe, uh, you know. He like, kind of looks around, make sure the Sfratu have left the room. You could uh, sneak into the scryery, yeah. see what the Sfratu are up to over there, see if they, you know, we can figure out some stuff. I look for approval from, from the gang. What are we feeling about this, guys? Oh. What's in it for us? We get to sneak in and listen to this fraud, too. If uh, you help out, I could uh, maybe get you into the dregs. Maybe uh, hook you up with some hemo pieces. He just he just named four new places. <laughs> or if you could do something about these gosh darn rats. And he kicks a rat from under the table. I stab the rat. <laughs> What's up with the rats? I don't know. They're, uh, they're everywhere. They're making the creatures in the bestiary sick. When did they start showing up? It seems like it's gotten especially worse in the last month. Oh. And you, you don't know where they're coming from? Uh, no. If you could help find them, that would be so appreciated. Well, I can tell you what. We will definitely kill any rats that we see along the way. How does that sound? Great. As far as the bestiary and the refusiary, if it's on our way, absolutely. But we kind of got a thing to do. Yeah, I already got my hands full with these letters. All right, well, I, mean, I just you might be interested in the dregs. That's all. What is the dregs? You know, the black market. Oh. Is that here in the spire? Yeah, you know, it is. Is it up or down? I don't know. If you uh, do me a favor, maybe I can tell you. And what's this guy's name? So many NPCs. The name's Twenty Wayne. Count Twenty Wayne. Count, what? Count. What? You're a count? Yeah. Are you a battler? Count Twenty Wayne. Is he a battler? Make a perception check. Yeah, is he well, dressed? Yeah, I'm going to check on this too. Oh, you better check. I got a nine. I got a seven. I got a 12. Elga, you know this is a, this is a battler. This is not a count. They're all messing with us. These little, these little. He's got a very dilap, like a very threadbare, torn cloak on. I think I, I think these battlers are from Scamsylvania. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I can get Hoover to help us carry the bodies. I, again, I say if we bump into the bestiary and we're just kind of, it's on our way, then yeah, let's do it. Let's go to the bestiary. Okay. Scamsylvania, sounds great. So we'll have to backtrack then to go back to the bestiary? Yeah, it's just right over there. He points I'm, vaguely I'm very, to the west. Is very, very insistent about this rat problem, and it is involved in the bestiary. Maybe we should investigate. Okay. The, the, two birds, one stone. So, oh, sorry. That's a bad <laughs> say, say the seed. Miss Lofty Bottom would be your friend. Yeah. Um, we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Miss Lofty Bottom, we know what channel she watched on TV. 
TV. We go <laughs> west and west, I guess, through the, the room that smells like copper into the bestiary. Correct. Yep. All right, let's go. What's your marching order? I'll go first. Elga, when you get to the double doors, which one do you go through? The right one. You go through the right door, and someone's coming through the other side at the exact same moment, and you bump into each other. Garnet! But if they're coming the other side, would I not bump into them? Or, yeah, he's saying yeah. that you passed. They came in, no, they, they came in on the same side Elga's trying to oh, go they, out of. Oh, they yeah. tried to open Correct. The, the, the left door for them. Correct. Yeah, they bump right into you, and you take... What?! Were they just running around with swords forward? They're running in with food. You take three points of bludgeoning damage. Pretzel swords. Pretzel swords. <laughs> Pretzel swords on a tray. The battler's holding their nose going, Ow! Do they oh. take any points of damage? Yes. Excellent. Oh, their nose is, uh, is bloody. Oh, no! I'm so sorry. Okay, no oh. need to cry. Left, left. Y- you left the room. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was just... I- I did a little bit of spinning before, and I was just a little dizzy, and I think I just went through the wrong door. You know, kid stuff. The battler continues on their way. Okay. Let's go to the bestiary, which was... Yeah, you walk to the <laughs> to the <laughs> west, which takes you back into the cellar, and then from there, that's the room that that battler was bringing creatures in. Yeah, from that room mm-hmm. up to the west of there. Let's like, a, yeah, right. a, a ramp. Okay, let's go down the ramp to the bestiary. Yes, I'm, I'm yeah, saying... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not the go here. here. Yeah, you walk further west, and it's a large, cool chamber reeking of fecal fetidness, Ugh, with yes. straw covering the floor, stocked with stacked cages confining various creatures along the western wall. To the east, on the side you entered from, there's chains and metal harnesses hanging on the wall, a steaming cauldron of topaz liquid, and this ramp leading to the cellar that you came from. Are there any bodies? Like, because they said they wanted to dispose of bodies. That was a separate thing, I think. No, like, that was just, in the bestiary, though, oh, right? Yeah, make a... Was it? Yeah, make a perception check. We had to go from bestiary to refusiary, is what yeah. you're saying. And the rats were a problem in the bestiary, too. Yeah, they're everywhere. 17. You notice that some of the cages have dead creatures in them. Poor thing. Could I, like, looking at the way the floor's laid out, does it look like the blood and bodies are dragged towards a particular place? Oh, that's really astute. Make an investigation check. Five. Yeah, it's hard to tell with all the straw on the floor. I'd like to look for holes that rats would be entering through. Yeah, you find, like, various missing stone. Oh, never mind. Make an investigation check. I already found it. <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> Seven. No, there's no rats here. Oh, dang it. <laughs> uh, I, are there any rats in the room with us? Are the rats in the room with us now? <laughs> are the rats in the room with us as we speak? You yes. see one rat chewing on some straw. I shoot at it with my uh, crossbow. Make an attack roll. Okay. Miss. 18. What? Yeah, it hits. Doing. Why do you want him to miss? So so we can see where it runs. <sighs> yeah, you skewer the rat and it falls over dead. Okay. <laughs> Very good folly. Do we see where the refusory entrance or whatever is? So, you know, you came from the east, so you know that the cellar's over there. You see a door to the north, and you know that that must be the other side of the door you saw previously yeah. that said bestiary on mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are the only two exits from this room. You can make an, make an investigation check from each other. So we have found a circle is what we have found. Yeah. That's a 15. You think you see drag marks leading to that northern door. Okay. All right, gang, let's get our hands dirty. We Drag marks? Like, like as in bodies have been dragged. Yeah, so the refusory must be to the north. Oh, yeah, if, okay. if so maybe do... if we go down to that west path, it'll yeah. take us there. Maybe. Or there's another, because there was another east path as Correct, well. further down. What yeah. sort of bodies are in the cage? In one of the cages, you see a dead giant goat, and in another one, you see a dead elf. Come here, high school. A dead elf? Yes. Mm. Bummer. Do we hear any squeakings or any mice noises? Make a perception check. Ooh, 19. You don't hear any other scurrying or rat noises. Do we actually need to be disposing of these bodies or should we just be following this path? I, I think we'll follow, we'll follow, we'll follow the path. Yeah, I feel like the the battlers are just trying to get us to do their yeah, work. And, I, they, and we are supposed work. to be counts and we are not supposed to be doing slowly work. Hey, a count asked you to help? No, he did not. <laughs> no, he did, <laughs> he did not. Uh, I had a bad vibe about that guy. All right, let's go to the refuse area then. All right, well, we don't know. We haven't seen a sign with the refuse area. Go yeah. to the drag mark place. Okay, get the bodies you're gonna gather the bodies Why? yeah and with hoofer yeah he said he's gonna put them on hoofer okay yeah you go up to the cage with which one do you pick first the the goat or the elf probably the elf yeah you go up to the cage with the dead elf in it and it's got a lock on it does our key open that lock you can try it i try it because i think i'm in possession of it yeah you uh take the key and try to open the lock this seems more like a it doesn't seem to fit this seems more like an arcane lock hmm. 
And they, are they both locked up? Yes. Are there any keys in the room, like hang, hung up or anything? Barney, make me a wisdom check. 15. You think that there must be a password that can open these locks. And as you're staring at it, that uh, dwarf battler is putting a bear back up into a cage. He sees what you're doing and whispers into you, over to you, Barney. He, like, motions for you to, like, bend down. So he whisper to you. Yeah. Bram. Then he, uh, he keeps walking. Bram. And it's open. Yeah, you uh, say that, and then the lock uh, on the cage with the elf uh, opens up. Okay. And I load him up on Hoofer. Okay. Does he have anything on him or anything? He's just a... No. Very, um... Clothes that are very big, oversized. It seems like the elf was very emaciated. And I guess can I do the same with the other goat? Yeah, you go over and open up the lock with the goat in it as well. And then I load him up with Hoofer. Okay, make an animal handling check. Not 20, 25. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to give you a hard time about I it. but no. Hoover. Hoover's playing along. <laughs> yeah, you load up the elf, uh, the dead elf and the dead uh, giant goat onto I'm Hoover's sorry, back. Hoover. Okay, now we go to the... the Follow the scratch marks. Scratch marks, blood marks. Drag. At the uh, the north. Yeah, who opens that door? Elga, why not? Choba's the left side of the door. <laughs> this is not a double no, door, know, but that, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, you open it up, and it is that hallway you saw before. Okay. And then from your perspective now, it just goes straight ahead of you to the north. The passageway to the west, which leads to the workshop, you know. Mm-hmm. Passageway just a little to the north and to the east, which you had already taken. Then further beyond that's another corridor that turns to the west, and then at the very end, it turns to the east. So there's like two corridors we haven't explored down there. Correct. One to the west and one to the east. Can we tell where the drag marks are leading? Make a investigation check. Can I participate in this? Sure. Do I have advantage since I'm looking up close? Yes. Sorry, I ask every time, no, and I rolled a four as my better roll. Really? A two and a four, yeah. Ten. <laughs> Seven. Yeah, it's, un- it's unclear. It's hard to see. Maybe by this point, you know, a lot of the blood has dried up, so you really can't tell which direction it goes. Barney, question for you. Yeah. Do you think Stinker would be jealous of Hoofer? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, I, different animals, right? Yeah, different uh, far- farm animals. Gotcha. Okay, just okay. asking. I mean, by... Can I see? Yeah, make an animal handling check. 13? Yeah, Stinker seems very indifferent. Okay, s- see if Stinker can s- sniff towards the dead bodies, whatever you call it. Room. Oh, like a guide dog. How are you going to try to get Stinker to do that? I point at the dead bodies and go, and then point, like, forward, like, where, like, have him sniff them and be like, go find them. You know, like, All right, make an animal handling check. Lots of animal handling checks this episode. This is the animal handling uh, episode. Stinker poops. On 14. The Does he poop? Please. He's a skeleton. I don't think so. It does, you just don't see it. Stinker just starts licking your foot, uh, and then he begins whimpering. Oh, sorry. And then right at that moment, one single Sparatu walks around the corner from that furthest one that goes to the east and looks at you all. Don't engage, don't engage. I just keep walking towards where he came out of. I walk towards the op to the other door. I doubt the Sparatu would be heading towards the dead bodies. So what do you mean? So Chip's going in the direction the Sparatu came from, which which is the east. Right, the the, The the east. place we haven't gone through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going that way. I guess I'm saying... I would imagine the Sprotu wouldn't be going to where they dispose of bodies. They seem to be just patrolling. Yeah, I think they're just uh, patrols. Because they keep going around and everywhere. Okay, what about Elga and Matid? Yeah, I'm following. I follow. Okay, the Sprotu looks at the carcasses on Hoofer's back, looks you all over, and then just seems to ignore you and keeps on keeps going on his way. Yeah, we just got to not engage and do suspicious stuff. So where, what do we see? Do we find those? those? Yeah, you turn that corner to the east, and it's a, it's a very long hallway that ends in a door at the far side on the east. Uh-huh. About halfway down the corridor to the north is a door, and then as well uh, on the right side to the south is another door. And this whole hallway kind of goes up a little bit. Elga, I hate your home. <laughs> hey, I didn't make it. <laughs> so there's three doors. You said one on the south wall, one on the north wall. And then one on the east wall. And at one the on end. the east mm-hmm. wall. Do any of these doors, could I look at them and see if any of them look significant? Well, they're all significant. But I mean, in like, their own special are there any way. like symbols or, or anything written on any of them? None. If, if, like, if you're asking if any of them are labeled, there aren't any really labels on any of them. They're just unmarked doors. No symbols or anything? Either? No. Okay. Are they all open? Like, could I just try the, the handles? Say the, the, thing, the one thing that stands out is the one to the east and the south are wooden, whereas the one to the north is iron. Oh, I think we should check out that north door. Iron door. Iron door first. Yeah. Is it open? I bet that's the aviary and then the, the, the dumpy bodies and the wooden doors. Either way, we get something accomplished because yeah, yeah. we got tasks. Yeah, you try to open it. It's got a lock on it. Does our key open that lock? Yeah. And uh, it's a very austere room with a red sigil on the northern wall just above a kneeling bench. 
and there's a bloodstone font in the center filled with swirling crimson ichor. It seems like from that room, there's another passage to the east. Oh my god. Like a, just like a fountain? Yeah. Yeah. So it was liquor or ichor. Ichor. What's, oh, what is ichor? Like a um, gore? Like a thick liquid? Okay. Is that like a thick liquid? Like a thing you would dump <laughs> bodies into? <laughs> That's what you are. <laughs> You don't think so. Okay. I will say, Barney, make me a religion check. Oh, this is like a... There's like a kneeling bench is what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like That's a... That's a three. Altar. Yeah, definitely no bodies here. I've been in church That's in a while. That's our cleric. I've been in church in a while. Hey, Barney. Could I go look at the fountain? Or the ichors? Yeah. You begin walking to the north to walk up to the fountain. And as you're doing that, Elga, you hear footsteps around the corner getting closer and closer. Are they coming from the east? Yes. As they quickly approach, you hear a voice speaking in hushed tones. Oh, this just isn't my day. You know this voice. It's a young male dwarf with uneven ginger hair runs straight into you hey. and spills a bottle of blood everywhere. Oh, my ma. Are you okay? Elga? Quiffly? Yeah, you found Quiffly the battler. Quiffly! Oh, gosh. hugs him. Yeah, and he gives you a big hug back. Join the group hug. <laughs> These are my friends, Quiffly. Oh, I can't wait to meet them in the next episode of Tales from the City. Hoover, we're just gonna. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen to you. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Ikiki, Blurble Gurble. Ikiki, Blurble Gurble is hello. Ikiki is bye. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Did you know that you could directly support the show by subscribing at stinkydragonpod.com slash first? We have some amazing little stinkers that we want to shout out this week, including Misfit Weird Girl, Aphelia, same. We got Vixie Soft Paws, Norse Ingram, Poke Inspired, and Subangelus. Thank you guys so much. You are directly supporting the show and you get access to more great content like Second Wind. Interact with us on subscriber-only Discord channels and events and so much more. Again, that's stinkydragonpod.com slash first. We cannot thank you guys enough for your support. It really, truly helps us be able to make this show and hopefully do so much more in the future. We also had some listeners who interacted with us on social media and Discord who had NPCs named after them in this week's episode. We had Graf the Painter at the Zero Photographer on First, voiced by Christian Young, who is X Chin Young on social media. Vin Vaughn, the Stinky Fingered Halfling, named after Vin Culprit on First. Beowarg the Monster Slayer user Von Beowulf on Reddit, voiced by Andrew Panton, at Andrew Panton on social media. Card I Now, the aspiring bartender, named after Tusked Centaur on first. Mrs. Lofty Bottom, the bird hater, named after Jeremy Smurf on Discord, and voiced by Larry Matavina, at Larry Matavina on social media. We also had Gally, the mumbling animal handler, named after Unicorn Dookie on first. Twinty Wayne the Count, who's at BB on first. And finally, Quiffly, who is Elga's butler, named after Aaron the Ace on first and voiced by Ben Ernst at Halcyon underscore Ben on social media. Additionally, we had the Sferatu, who are voiced by our very own David Sonye, who is at David underscore Sonye on social media. The Stinky Dragon channel is managed by Ben Ernst. This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Kai Cook, Written, edited, and composed by Micah Reisinger with additional editing work by David Sonye. Head over to stinkydragonpod.com slash first for all things stinky. And make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. That's me being spooky. I walk over to another cage and I whisper into the lock, Stephanie Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> the lock begins sparkling. <laughs> I also understand this reference. Ha 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 ha. Author of Twilight, <laughs> which is <laughs> another vampire. Story. Bram, Bram Stoker <laughs> is, is a vampire. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>